say something, you say no. So after the discovery of the torture camps across Nigeria, what next for the victims? On our next segment, we'll have taken a look at mental health still, and um, this is going to border around children and adolescents, uh, the mental disorder that they face, or some of them face as they grow up. We still have in our studio uh, Dr. Grace Ijarogwe. She's a consultant psychiatrist uh, with, uh, in charge of child and adolescent mental health services at the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital. Is it Oshodi? Oshodi Annex. Okay, Oshodi Annex, all right. Uh, so as we, before we wrapped, or as we wrapped up the other segment, uh, the questions on our lips was, what happens to these inmates or the victims who were, you know, discovered from these torture camps? Now that brings me to my question. When we're talking about mental health disorder, children, are also victims, not just not adults. Adult, yeah. You know, it's not an adult thing. Now, in 2017, there was something the UN said. Uh, the U UN said there were three million drug users in northwest Nigeria, and uh, nearly half a million of them were in Katsina State. Now, this could even be a reason why some of these people ended up in these torture oh. homes. Now, for children, tell me. How can we, as parents, as adults, identify that this child is struggling with either education or struggling with one thing or the other as he or she is uh, growing up? Okay, so we have child mental health problems that start from birth. So the child was born mentally deficient. And so from right, from when child is very small, they've been noticed that the child is not sitting well, not able to talk, He's not achieving tasks that other children are achieving and maybe intellectually disabled. And that is even in degrees. Some children might even be completely normal. They look normal, but it's just that they cannot learn. Give an instruction now, they're forgotten. Give it again, they're forgotten because they just can't. They have no memory to retain information. And so to the parent, that appears like the child is disobedient. Mm. This child is perpetually rude and disobedient. And so those are the kind of children that may end up in those kind of facilities where they think perhaps if they give them some gruesome punishment, they will learn to take instructions. So this is a misapprehension on the part of the parent because that parent could not identify that this child that is not learning or not taking instructions or not, you know, is, is intellectually disabled. It will also come across in school where you have that, that some teacher is now getting into trouble because they have to beat and beat and beat this child because child is not taking instructions, okay? So any child at all that cannot learn, or they are, we are giving repeated instructions and they are forgetting, before we say this is stubbornness, bring them in for assessment, because there are actually tests you can do, and you can know that this child has intellectual disability, you can certify the degree of disability, the amount of um, rehabilitation this kind of child is gonna need, the kind of program that child is gonna enter either to help to learn more, or to be able to do something in terms of rehabilitation. All those things are in place now in modern science, and they can actually be done. So children who are not learning, that is a degree. Another set of children are children that, we say they grow up from the cradle, running around. Mm. So these are children who are hyperactive. The minute they start working, they notice that they cannot sit still, they're climbing tables, chairs everywhere. You tell them sit down, they cannot sit down. They can't sit a minute, they're everywhere. And those ones too are also labeled as stubborn and wicked. They are not taking instruction from parents and they can be very overwhelming and the parents can really become very, very sick and tired of those kind of children. But these are conditions that are treatable with drugs. These children can be calmed on medication. Some of them, even as, as, as fast as six months, they can become very calm and some that have to be on drugs for a, a bit longer or maybe a few more years, you know, but children can be calmed on drugs now. So. This kind of children, they cannot record. We are putting it out on air now that people because in those, in many homes, people have children who have these issues who cannot sit still. Know that they have an hyperactive is problem. It, is, that a, is that a disorder? It's a disorder. In itself? Yes, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. It is well known all over the world. These children are hyperactive, but they can be treated with medications and they do get well. The autistic children are a bit more tricky because they are not talking, they have sensory problems, feeling problems. You know, and they are not interacting with pairs and all that. 
and but there are modalities and ways of also taking care of them. They have challenging behavior too that can come across as very, very, very overwhelming for parents. But they can also be taken care of in the hospitals. Most of the children we don't need to admit. They come for, from home for treatment for drugs. They go back. So they are on our patient treatment basis. You know, we manage them with the community, we manage them with the schools. And um, for even some schools, we are always writing letters like forever. Let this child be promoted with pairs. They say, ah, the child must pass English and maths. If not, child cannot be promoted. This child is intellectually disabled. This child will not be able to pass English and maths because those are very tasking issues. So whatever this child can pass, but we want this child to have an education. We want this child to be schooled. Because if you look at the countenance of a child that went through school with pairs and the one that went back, uh, stayed back at home without school, difference. there will be a difference. This child is able to achieve friendship, yeah. is able to achieve enlightenment, you know, and learn. And skills, there will be many yeah. other things that they can learn, social skills and all that, you know, and ultimately before they can go into vocational training. So let them go through schools. And they say, no, 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 this is not our curriculum. We once had a person that... If this child takes this newspaper, you will make it into a horse and you know it's a horse. Into a, a cow boat. and you know it's a cow. A into cat. a chicken and you know it's a chicken. This is a child that is already naturally talented. But this child has intellectual disability, cannot mm. learn maths and English. Mm. Has learning problems. And we're appealing to the technical colleges. Can you just take this child in and train in art? Ah, they say no. He has to pass Jamba and has five credits in school, sir. So our system in itself, there has got to be a change. Mm. We ha that we've got to create a system that can absorb children who have learning dif difficulties, help them, educate them through school, graduate them in their own capacity, take them through vocational training. Because the father, this child, can child cannot learn English and math. This child can maybe the best hairdresser you can find around. True. True. This child because we are out of time. The best because we're almost out of time, uh, Dr. Ijarabe. Uh, I want to know if all seizures are mental illness. For example, epilepsy. You okay. have it once, you know, in a while. Once in a while. You know, is it is it also a mental illness? Well, for the for the conventional seizure where it's a jerk, we say they are neurological conditions. Okay, mm. where you know we control these jerks with drugs that they take uh, on continuous, on perpetual, on maybe on daily basis. But some of those seizures have symptoms that come up bizarre, bizarre. The person can just get up and travel to Ghana. We we'll do all the routine normal activities that people do, yeah. pay for fares and all that, and, end up, and that was just an essential episode. And the person wakes up out of it and says, oh my God, I'm in Ghana, how did I get here? They can't even remember. So we have some seizures like that that bother with us on mental illness because it looks like a mental spade, like a mental illness, you know? Or, you know, they could do some irrational things. They could do things that look like even crime. You know, like they, they, can, they can go park other people's property, mm. carry everything home, and then get home and say, how did I, how did I come about this? You know, and so and things... They, they don't get lynched before they get that to They don't even get lynched. And, and that is why you should not crucify people before you try them with the law, because you may never tell what has caused us. Mm. Okay, so these are, they, they're also treated, they're treated for the mental illness aspect, aspect of it, and they're also treated for the neurological aspect. part, aspect, yeah. aspect of it. You know, Dr. Grace, thank you so very much for coming to the thank program. You. Thank you so very much. I'm sure a lot thank of you. Nigerians are uh, a lot more informed and a lot more aware about these issues. And for our government too, um, you know, let's be a bit more responsive. We need more, more centers. We need to rejig our curriculum, our education yeah. curriculum to accommodate um, uh, people with um, uh, these, uh, I would say, different challenges. Maybe challenges. Yes, mm -hmm. it's definitely very key. Well, thank you so very much, Dr. Grace for staying with us. Well, before we go, uh, before we leave the show, just to remind us, there's a breaking news, the fire uh, break outbreak at uh, still at the Balogo market, yes, in Lagos, just beyond 24 hours after um, uh, it was recorded that uh, there was a twin fire yesterday. This one is said to have started at about um, 6 a.m. Um, the early hours of today. I bet we want to believe that uh, it has been curtailed, as we are aware, La Sema uh, are all there trying to put down uh, this inferno. We'll bring you details of this um, in our next news bulletin and maybe on our next um, talk show we'll stay on top of this um, matter. All right, Zika. Yes, yeah, sports. We could take sports updates, so don't worry. Sports Cafe 10:30. Today on STV 9 o'clock.
But tomorrow is another day. We'll be here again, hopefully. Uh, David might not be, will not be here suddenly, but don't worry. Uh, he has a very great reason for being absent. I'm sure everyone would uh, accept you or leave, David. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. I all can't right. wait to be back after my leave, all right? So I'll see you guys when yes. I return. Stay kind. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Say something, you say no.